1,000 more U.S. troops are headed to the Middle East, a move meant to show Iran that the U.S. will not allow Tehran to continue to threaten ships around the Strait of Hormuz. Iran says it is ready to respond if the U.S. takes action. The U.S. has also released more evidence, photos that appear to show Iranian patrol boats removing a mine from an oil tanker. World leaders are chiming in. Russia says the U.S. are trying to start a war. China calls all of this a Pandora's box of problems. And Angela Merkel says even though there is mounting evidence Iran was behind last week's oil tanker attacks, Germany wants a peaceful solution to all of this. Well, our Fred Blackgen is in Tehran, in uh, Iran, with reaction to this. And uh, Fred, first of all, what has been the reaction from Iran to this latest move from the United States? Mm. Mm. Hi there, Christina. Yeah, the Iranians really have had uh, a flurry of reactions, and they are really of various kinds. First of all, the Iranians continue to unequivocally say that they were not behind these tanker attacks. They simply say uh, that they didn't do it. They haven't really reacted to some of the new photos uh, that have been put out by the U.S. administration, of course, by the Pentagon uh, as well. Then you have some of the more bellicose reactions, one of them coming uh, today from a Revolutionary Guard commander who says that any additional U.S. forces here in this region, of course, referring to America beefing up its presence in the Middle East and, of course, specifically in the Gulf region, could not be a threat to Iran because he feels that his own forces, Iran's forces, are in such a state of alert and are so strong at this point in time that they would prevail in the end. Uh, he was saying that the U.S. would, quote, feel Iran's iron fist if it tried to make a move. Of course, the Iranians don't consider the moves uh, that the U.S. is making here, sending those additional troops as a defensive move. They consider it as a move that could be threatening to them. There was another um, uh, commander from uh, the Iran's regular army uh, who came out and said that the military here in Iran right now is very closely monitoring what the U.S. is doing and also saying uh, that there would be a blow by the Iranians if the U.S. decided to make any sort of move. So you do have some of these uh, military folks here uh, in Iran who are making some pretty bellicose statements, essentially saying that if the U.S. were to move first, that Iran would be ready to respond. But there are also some fairly moderate voices. It was quite interesting earlier today, the president of the country, Hassan Rouhani, he was at a public event here, uh, just a little bit outside of Tehran, and there he told uh, folks that, that uh, Iran does not want any sort of conflict, does not want any sort of war with any country. He then also took a not-so-subtle swipe at the Trump administration and said he believes that the big issue right now that uh, Iran has with the United States is that there are, as he puts it, quite inexperienced people sitting in Washington, D.C., Christina. Yeah, well, with all this sort of bellicose rhetoric, as you point out, Fred, I guess a crucial question in all of this is, are Iran mm. in a position to engage in military conflict with the U.S. if the situation continues mm. to escalate? Mm. You know, I think, I think when you're looking at uh, the balance of power, if you will, in this region between Iran uh, and the United States, you always have to take a view uh, at a possible asymmetrical uh, conflict between these two countries. On the face of it, of course, uh, Iran's military by far doesn't have the kind of technology and the kind of firepower that the U.S. has. One U.S. Nimitz-class aircraft carrier probably has more combat-ready jets than the entire Iranian Air Force. But there's one thing uh, that I read today by another uh, Iranian general who said, look, if there's going to be a response by the Iranians, it's going to be in a very large region. And that goes back to one of the things that the Iranians have been telling me uh, over the past couple of weeks as the conflict with the U.S. has been flaring up. They said, look, the U.S. needs to understand if it does come to a shooting war between Iran and the United States, that it's not only going to be facing the regular Iranian military, but that Iran also has a lot of proxy forces in a lot of the countries around the region. In fact, one senior Revolutionary Guard commander told me, look, the Americans need to understand that next to every single American military base in this region, there is a militia that is loyal to Iran. And that's something uh, that they certainly need to deal with. And also they need to understand that those militias are going to be mobilized if it does come to some sort of escalation, Christina. Yeah, it's uh, interesting and good to remember that as well. Uh, Fred Plyke in there live from Tehran. Thanks very much, Fred. So what could this all mean to Iran in the bigger picture? Our Christian Amanpour asked the Iranian ambassador to the UK, and here's what he had to say. So they're using an internationally recognized um, statement of defending international peace and security and defending against a threat to that. Where do you think this is headed? Uh, unfortunately, we are heading towards a confrontation, which is very serious for everybody in the region. 
Oh, Iran's ambassador to the United Kingdom speaking with CNN there. And with us now, we can go to CNN political and national security analyst David Sanger. And uh, David, we just heard there from Iran's ambassador to the UK saying that we are heading for confrontation, despite President Rouhani saying he wants to avoid conflict today. In your estimation, how close are we to military action? Well, it's a very good question uh, because uh, today we're seeing the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, uh, going down to Central Command in Tampa, Florida, which is the command that is responsible, of course, for patrolling the Gulf, and if there was military action, would be responsible for carrying out that action. Interestingly, he's there without the Defense Secretary or the Acting Defense Secretary, Patrick Shanahan. Uh, it's fairly unusual to see a uh, Secretary of State headed to uh, a military command without having the Defense Secretary or someone senior from the Defense Department uh, with him as well. Um, I think at this point, the biggest fear that I have of confrontation comes out of an accident or someone doing something without thinking it all through. You've got a lot of people jostling around the Gulf of Oman, right off the Iranian coast. Uh, as your uh, previous report indicated, you've got a lot of U.S. military bases that are hard by Iranian militia locations. The chance of someone just sort of lashing out with something small that brings about a larger response is, I think, a bigger risk than President Rouhani or President Trump deliberately ordering a major strike. Now, if this gets worse and the uh, nuclear enrichment goes ahead, I think you will hear a lot more discussion about whether to take out Natanz, the main enrichment site in Iran, which, of course, is fairly shallow. Uh, the Israelis mm -hmm. have often practiced what it would do, what it would take to take that out. So let's talk about motivations on both sides here, David, because Iran are pushing back, as we know, to loosen the crippling economic sanctions to drive a wedge even between Europe and the United States. What is less clear, though, is what Washington's endgame is here. What do you think ultimately that is? Well, you know, one of the frustrations of covering this is that it's very difficult to figure out what uh, the administration's strategy is. And I'm not entirely sure they have one. They have some broad goals, which Secretary Pompeo laid out in a speech around this time last year at the Heritage Foundation. It was basically a list of 12 things that the Iranians had to go do, but almost all of them would have required reversing the normal behavior of the Iranian state. Um, then the question is, does this administration want regime change? They say they don't, but John Bolton, the national security advisor, had written about that pretty extensively before he was in the White House. Do they want to have a change of behavior by the regime? Clearly. Um, do they want to renegotiate the nuclear accord? Well, they do, but without giving anything up in return for having Iran give up its enrichment uh, capability, which it argues it's entitled to as a signatory to the NPT, the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty.